right, so this is Harley Hooched. Uh, we are sitting down uh, to talk about Night of the Templar with writer, director, stunt co coordinator, casting director, producer, and star uh, of the film, Paul Sampson. How's it going, man? Going great. Now, should I look at myself or you and Brandon? I don't think it fucking matters, honestly. You know what? If you want to stare at yourself, by all means. You can stare at the ceiling. Exactly. Um, and I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> oh, starstruck. Can you see some things? I lost a lot of friends up there. Yeah. Okay. It's a good look. It's a good angle. It's a good angle. It's a good angle. You yeah, know, no. when we said inside look uh, at Paul Simpson, we didn't literally mean, mean... Internally. Okay. I can get you a tonsillectomy while we're at it. Yeah. Oh, whoa. whoa. <laughs> I had one of those and I got pregnant. <clears throat> So, I mean, Brad told us that this thing was your, like, baby, this was your child, that you did everything, but I didn't realize just how much of Night of the Templar is you. I mean, you. like, literally every credit. No, come on. Look at the credits. There must be, in all honesty, if you look at the, the credits online or the end credits, there must be 300 credits. This I mean... Yeah. There's a medieval, the medieval shoot, uh -huh. uh, which is a couple of weeks of the medieval shoot. And then there's the uh, modern day shoot, which is a couple of weeks. And then there's the uh, battle scene shoot. Um, I had, uh, I would say, five different editors on the film. Wow. I had one, two, three, four or five different DPs. Because I had two, two cameramen on two different sections of the movie uh three different ad's four different ad's wow yeah so i mean it's uh it's like watching lord of the rings you know when they have like the uh the cgi credits at the end of the movie mm -hmm. gone for like three songs yeah yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like okay um so how I have, that process uh, what's that the whole process of shooting and post. Oh no, it's me. It's me. As, as far as I'm the only person that. Uh, oh, Joe Lemon worked the set designer. He worked all three of the uh, shoots, you know. But I had different crews, so I get a lot of credits. But yeah, it's me as far as uh, a lot of the shit. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> all the big credits, right? All the main stuff, like you well, know, craft service. Mm -hmm. The important things, you know, you brought the bagels. Yeah, so you got a PA credit. That was actually pretty yeah. uh, direct and star Janet, and also Janet, PA. Janitorial services. Yep. <laughs> Cleaned up after the uh, the other actors. Yeah. The horses, the horses, yep. <laughs> yeah. So, um, this has got to be one of David Carradine's, like, last films, right? It's his last film. Literally? Yes. Well, it's his last film that hasn't been made yet, unless someone digs him up. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was telling me they had a film with him in it, and uh, they showed me the trailer. <laughs> I'm sorry, and the trailer was clips of him from like the 70s. Really? And I'm like, are you? And he's like in the shadows, like over here, like this. You can. He looks like a like a young man, you know. I'm like, you can't do that, you know. Dig him up, string him up. Yeah. Up. What happened was he went. Um, he went to uh, Thailand, you know. And he never actually got to shoot. He, he got there. Um, he called me the week before. Uh, he just bought a new car, I think. Uh, and he, he went out there, and um, he didn't shoot yet. He didn't actually get to shoot. He was kind of there, and, you know, it happened. The rest is history. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. what happened, happened. How was, was it like working with him on set? Uh, well, I worked with him. <laughs> I'll tell you a quick story about David. The first time I met him, uh, it was a different shoot, and uh, I was having one of those days where I didn't really uh, care for the um, the dialogue and the set and the whole thing. It was being done wrong, you know? Okay. And so I, I went to the side of the room, and I didn't want to, like, you know, kill anyone, so I figured I should just take a, a time out, you know, because they weren't getting it. it. It was like, you know, when you can see something and it's so obvious – and no one can see it but you, and you're like, you know, are you guys fucking with me? You don't see that? It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like looking at a table at a restaurant, and there's like two salt shakers on the table, and no one gets it. You're like, it's like that obvious to me. So I walk to the side of the room, and I'm just standing there, you know, alone. And all of a sudden, David comes sauntering over, 
And uh, David had a reputation of being a little standoffish on set. He could be in his own private Idaho, you know what I mean, his own world. And uh, he came up to me, and he looks at me, and he, he, he knew what was going on because he was feeling the same thing as I was, you know. And he looks at me, he looks up over my shoulder, and there's a big, giant, no smoking sign, like, right, like, behind my big, huge cranium. There's a big, like, <laughs> do not fucking smoke, you know. We're in a inside building. He pulls out a pack of cigarettes, and he goes, you want to smoke? <laughs> it's hot. And I'm like, and I don't smoke. And I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? You know? <laughs> so we're, we're smoking. We're smoking, and a PA comes up to us. And between the two of us, you know, she wants nothing to do with us. It's like, you know, like Frankenstein and the Wolfman. Right. And she doesn't even want to, like, um, deal with us. And she has to tell us it's time to get back to the scene. And, uh, well, well, anyway, David says we need a minute. And we started telling jokes to each other out of the blue. We just went back and forth, back and forth, back and, like, just, I don't know who went first. But it went up for, like, 15 minutes, and he finally, finally trumped me. He tells a joke about a uh, – I'm going to mess the joke up now – about the uh, a rat – no, a bunch of mice. They're in their little mice hole. You know, their little, you know, they're doing their thing. And, uh, and they're all boasting and bragging. You know, a couple, they got a couple of beers in them, you know. And one mouse goes to the other mouse. He goes, I'm the shit. I'm the shit. And the other mice go, why? He goes, you know that, uh, that mouse trap? And they go, yeah. He goes, I snap it. I get underneath it. And I do push-ups with the bar. <laughs> and, you know, bench press, push-ups. Okay. So they kind of go, yeah, that's cool. Second mouse goes, yeah. He goes, you know that, that white powder, the, the, that rat poison? And they go, yeah. They go, I snort the shit. I snort the shit, I'm bad. The third mouse looks at him. The third mouse looks at him. He goes, hey, you guys are fucking boring. I'm going to go fuck the cat. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I just remember that like seven years later, but... uh. <laughs> so he told me that. So it was like, yeah, okay. I'm okay. We went back to set. We worked. And um, a few years later, you know, I, I called upon him to be in my movie. And, uh, you know, he loved the script. You you saw this movie. It's bizarre, you know. Yeah. And David was a bizarre dude. He, was a, he wasn't a regular, you know, um, you know, person. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like me. <laughs> just a normal guy just a normal guy <laughs> <laughs> so so uh but uh yeah i'm sorry i'll, I'll be serious no don't don't be are you joking we're uh, a joke I, I mean, just my eyebrows again hold on i'm adjusting my eyebrows <laughs> tuning in tuning in so yeah so uh that's david you know he was uh he was a great guy that's know? fantastic man yeah great yeah. story I want to remember that joke. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm really good with jokes, and that joke, I just kind of remembered it, you know. I could do it again in a second take, but I don't do second takes, so fuck it. Run oh, it. Oh, 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 oh. Run it. That ass over here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. you, guys, you guys have matching shirts on. Well, it's the brand. We got we to gotta represent. Yeah, put it up, put it up. Oh, they, they can't see that, can they? No, they got oh. it. They can do it. Yeah. We're just yeah. smaller on your end. No, I just don't know if... if can they see both of us or just one of us? Or yeah, like just it? the recording uh, side by side. Okay, because when I look at you guys right now, I can only tell you guys apart because Tyler's wearing glasses. Clearly, yeah. that's yeah. the most distinguishing feature between the two of us. Yeah, that's, that's just... Facial hair. <laughs> no, you have the same kind of... You, you, you walk know. down the street and you're just... It's automatically... I have to put the glasses on or people... It's, like, you know, it's, it's just weird. It's just weird. What do you mean? What do you mean? You're black? Uh, surprisingly, Wait, yeah. I know. I know. It's... Oh, it's strange because you know my mom is black and then my dad is like black, so yeah, I get confused. Yeah, fucking yeah, sucks, man. How does it work? <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. All right, so um, we wanted to talk about um, the fact that they, so if I'm not talking, can they see this? They can see you no matter what you're doing, okay. and believe me, I am keeping the recording. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, when we walked in the night of the Templar, I mean, we had a completely different conception of what that movie was going to be. I mean, yeah. it was marketed as this kind of like, you know... That wasn't me. 
medieval epic kind of revenge story. And what we ended up with is this kind of cult. It's a cult film. You're right. Like a- yeah. action, comedy, drama, sh- crime, like mystery. You really did Black stick Europe, to murder mystery. Yeah, you really yeah. didn't stick to one genre. You, you kind of touched on a lot of different areas, and it actually flows together pretty it, really well. Like it ties in. in, its... in a, yeah. Brandon, it, the thing is when you have a lot of genres, like when um, – I mean not many movies have had this many genres. I'm trying to think of one. I mean Shaun of the Dead had the zombie – horror element and it had comedy but even that fits pretty clearly into like the sort of parody uh, genre where you know you're mo- you're mark- mocking other um films from the the supposed you know zombie genre whatever but right. but Shaun of the dead they did have a uh two really dramatic scenes one with bill nighy oh yeah. yeah oh yeah so i mean that's uh so it kind of had two genres comedy horror but it did have a a, a touch of drama but not really. Um, Rocky Horror Picture Show is has a musical element to it, in comedy and dark. I mean, but, uh, that's what we're missing is you should have thrown a musical number in there. <laughs> you want to laugh? In the original cut, I sang and played guitar. In it. I played a song and played you guitar. Should. <laughs> it was great. It was, no, it was only 45 seconds long, or a minute long, and um, it's the scene right. Be right after um, right when I do the yoga, okay. it, it, it's it's before everyone shows up, and it shows me um, just walking around. There's a cat outside, the one that watches uh, Ashley. It's outside, and I'm playing with the cat, and then it cuts to me. I come up with with a, with a guitar, and I sing a song, and it's a montage, and it's classic. And I made a mistake of getting rid of it. Oh, um, you should do a director's cut. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's it's called Magic Woman, this song, and um, and it's a montage of me, like, just throwing an apple up in the air, and me playing with the cat, and me doing the yoga, and it's just this stupid montage, you know? And then it goes back to the yoga moment, you know, and then it keeps going from there. Um, and uh, and then there's one more moment where, um, when I'm with, with Drago, you know, the Billy Drago scene, where it pans down and shows my crotch, and it shows Billy looking like and me like going like, <laughs> like it's a funny moment, right? And uh, one of the distribution people looked at it, and he didn't get the movie. You want to make it like this action movie. Mm-hmm. They want to remove Billy's character from the movie. What? And you so I know it's, I love your expression. Like what? What are you nuts? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> It's, it's a great character. Yeah. Um, Billy's really character. Was, when he came up, man, that... Oh, yeah. Dude. Right. This was brilliant. Thank you. It fits the movie. You know, it's it's brilliant. I, we, I just did a talk show with him last week, and, uh, you know, and people love Billy's character, you know? But the, I guess if you're a guy that's, you know, sexually frustrated and, you know, you you got a pot belly and you're grumpy and you want to watch Kingdom of Heaven, you don't want to see anything funny. So <laughs> this is the this distribution guy, I guess, that I oh, was going to go with at first. And he was, oh, we have to take Billy out of the trailer. I'm like, Billy should be the only – it could be just Billy could be the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he goes, a woman in drag. I go, in the Rocky Horror Picture Show, did so bad at the box. Yeah, right. Exactly. Seriously. Like, there's no fucking precedent. And, and then there's just, he goes, well, that's like a cult film. And I'm like – I think you just nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's I'm like, like, it's a two salt shaker situation. Is that you don't see what's going yeah, on? Right. Back away. Get away from the tree. Back, <laughs> back away from the tree. Um, so, and so, and so I got over to, and so then I, um, the guy that brought me into him, they had a conversation, and the guy called me the next day, and I said to him, I said, I don't really like that guy. I don't want him anywhere. <laughs> in my universe, you know? And uh, he goes, well, he thought you, um, not self-serving or self-sufficient or something like that. I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, you know, he says, you know, he got it. He has to play, play the guitar and sing. He has to show his crotch. He has to tell this, the, the, the audience he's a Shakespearean trained actor. Uh, it's I, self-important. Right, I go, that's the, that's a, it's a goof, I'm goofing on my.